All right, we are uh, going to move to item 3.4. Vice Chancellor Russell, please introduce the subject. Right. Thank you very much, President Hemmelstein and uh, members of the Board of Governors. Um, uh, the California Community Colleges have been engaged uh, with the uh, California Council for the Humanities on a major project, and so I thought it would, uh, it would be good to bring the CEO and president of that organization to you to give kind of an overview of this large project, um, and I'm happy to say that um, he has engaged the community colleges successfully and has become a great partner and a good friend in the process. Great, thanks so much, and Barry, thanks so much for your support during this process. Uh, Chancellor Scott, Board of Governors, thanks for taking a few minutes to hear me out. And uh, members in the audience, I hope as you see this presentation, you can think about ways in which community colleges can be further involved. Uh, I'm the president of the California Council for the Humanities. We're a nonprofit organization, and we believe ideas can connect California, and that uh, it's important in fact, fundamental to our democracy that people understand and know our history and uh, study philosophy and literature. We have a, a board of directors from across the state, uh, and most recently, uh, President Ben Duran of Merced Community College served on our board, great guy, and uh, currently Sandra Serrano, uh, the Kern County president, is on our board, and uh, so we have deep connections to the community college system. What I'm going to talk with you today is uh, about an initiative called Searching for Democracy. And listening to the past few minutes of your conversation, I can tell you're well versed in democracy. <laughs> um, so this is a, a statewide initiative to get Californians to explore the meaning and requirements of democracy leading into the November 2012 presidential elections. This statewide initiative will begin in February and take place throughout uh, 2012 until those elections. While some will be searching for candidates through this initiative, we'll be searching for democracy itself. Why are we doing this? Uh, the historian Taylor Branch, famous civil rights historian, uh, said democracy demands public trust. And right now in our society, a recent poll said, told us that 89% of the public does not trust government. Further. Thomas Jefferson said, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free, it expects what never was and never will be. Um, and this year, national test scores uh, tell us that three out of four students lack a basic understanding of democracy. So if you talk with people about what's the state of our democracy, um, you often hear a sense of hopelessness. Um, but you know, we as humans, our reason, our imagination, the humanities, we created democracy. So we have those tools to sustain democracy. How are we gonna do this? Uh, we've been working with Barry and other partners across the state to create a <coughs> statewide initiative. Uh, you all have heard of One City, One Book programs. Well, we decided to do, take it one step further and, and, and do it five books, the whole state, to create a statewide conversation. The five books we selected uh, we thought, let's begin with the foundation of our democracy, the Constitution. It's time that, that people, if four out of five students don't understand the basic tenets of our democracy, let's explore the meaning of the Constitution. The other books include Farewell to Manzanar, uh, which is about the internment of the Japanese Americans during World War II. Uh, Sinclair Lewis's It Can't Happen Here, which I just read last year, and it's a fascinating story about fascism taking over the U.S. The fourth book is A Paradise Built in Hell, a San Francisco author who explores human nature and how we act in times of disaster, and believe it or not, it's a hopeful book. She says <laughs> that in times of disaster, we see the best of who we are. We see that we want to help one another and ask the question, what if we brought that same spirit into our daily working, and what kind of profound impact would that have on our democracy? And the fifth book is by Daniel Alarcón. Daniel is uh, 33 years old. This book he wrote in 2008. It was selected by the Washington Post, the LA Times, the Christian Science Monitor as the best work of fiction in 2008. 
the New Yorker just said he was one of the 20 authors under 40 that we should pay attention to. And it's a brilliant story. Um, so we've been working very closely with uh, libraries across the state, and uh, we have now commitments from communities across the state. You see all these red dots. Those red dots translate into places like Calexico, San Diego County, uh, all of LA County, Riverside County, San Bernardino, Mono, up to Mount Shasta, Tehama County, all Sa San Francisco, all of these communities are going to be pers participating in a statewide read. They've selected one or more of those books. I'll give you an example. Here in Sacramento, in the fall 2012, they're going to be talking about the Constitution. So they'll have discussion groups in libraries across the city. K through 12 will be participating. KVIE, public television and public radio will come on board. The Sacramento Bee is on board. Um, CSU will be on board. Uh, it would be wonderful to think about how the community college system in this area could participate. They're going to invite in such scholars as uh, Justice of the Supreme Court Kennedy, um, the fellow who, who uh, from University of Pennsylvania who edited uh, the, uh, or annotated the Constitution for Penguin Books will come in. It's going to be a big happening in Sacramento. And these kinds of things will be happening in, in communities like this across the state. Uh, already community colleges are participating, Chabot College in Hayward, Santa Monica City College is, is working with Santa Monica, Fresno City College, San Diego Community College. I'd like to see more participation across the state. And what would it take for every community college to participate is the question I'm asking. Uh, Barry's been helping me with this. We've been thinking about humanity, humanity scholars leading discussions in communities. Uh, campus-wide reads at community colleges. So like in Sacramento, what if every incoming person read the Constitution and participated in, in discussions across the, Sacramento? What I would say is this would, you know, community colleges demonstrate their value every day, but getting them out into the communities and this is participants in this type of community-wide happening would again demonstrate that even more. So that's the statewide book club. There are other pieces of this. We're going to have public dialogues in seven to ten places across the state with scholars like Stephen Carter of Yale, uh, Randall Kennedy of Harvard, Robert Putnam, bringing them to California to engage in conversations. Um, such topics as, is civility overrated? What could kill democracy? How do we cultivate a democratic culture? And of course, community colleges are central to all these conversations. Another piece of this Searching for Democracy initiative is a traveling exhibition which opened at De Anza Community College. Now this exhibition looks at the history of civil rights in California. The first time this has been done on a large scale, that whole history from the founding of the state to today. Um, it's, I call it moments when people have stood up for democracy. This is available for just a couple of hundred dollars to community colleges across the state, and I'd like to see it travel to as many community colleges as possible. Um, so far, uh, it's Humboldt State. Uh, like I said, De Anza has it in Cupertino. Saracosa Community College in Bishop. It's something that's easy to put up, easy anywhere in, 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 in community college campuses, and I think it's the education it provides is, is really important. Um, we'll also have a, a series of webinars called Teaching Democracy, and we'll bring in some of the foremost scholars in the nation to talk with professors and teachers K through 16 about how to talk about issues like the intentions of the framers of the Constitution. Who is a citizen? Uh, these are all Pulitzer Prize winning historians, uh, National Book Award historians, people like Jack Rakoff at Stanford, Joyce Appleby at UCLA, Clarence Walker, uh, uh, Alan Taylor here at UC Davis. So it's, these are going to be great opportunities for uh, teacher training, professor training, and I'd love uh, for community college uh, 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 affiliated people to be uh, participants in these. 
Um, we also have grant opportunities, which are up to $10,000 for democracy theme projects, and I know a number of community colleges have participated in those. Um, our next deadline for that is November 15th. Um, so as you can see, it looks like confetti is strewn across the state. A lot of participation uh, in this democracy initiative. Again, it kicks off in late February, March, and we'll lead into the national election. Most activities are taking place in the fall, uh, and it just seems like it would be a great opportunity for community colleges. We see right now we have a list of great partners, state libraries, community colleges already, CSU, California Center for the Book, National Endowment for the Humanities, Penguin Books, NPR Affiliates, UC, it goes on. Um, what the California Council will provide for this initiative is high quality content, teacher curriculum, discussion guides, um, coordination of all the different players in the state, uh, umbrella public relations, we're working with a PR firm, and a dynamic hub online where we'll have author interviews, we'll have ways for people to interact with the content. Um, my final message is democracy is not an outcome, but an experiment. And in my mind, community colleges are central to this experiment. Uh, searching for democracy is an opportunity to demonstrate community college centrality in communities across the state. So I know you're doing great work within the community college. We would like to use this as an opportunity to leverage and highlight community college faculty and students in the communities that are participating across the state. Uh, I'm looking to Barry and you all if you have ideas about how your community colleges can participate. Thank you for all you do for California. I know what you do sitting up there is a lot of work. <coughs> um, and I think it's very important to our democracy. So thank, thanks each of you. And uh, I look forward to continuing to work with Barry, Chancellor Scott, and anybody else who wants to come on board. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, board member comments or questions? Member McDougal. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, thank you for your presentation. and. More importantly, thank you for your good work on this project. I think when we have a negative rating of 89% on the effectiveness of our government, we have a problem. And this uh, addresses it rather directly. So uh, thank you for doing that. Second, I don't think there is an organization that is better equipped to try to present this throughout the state than the California Community Colleges. Third, the one suggestion I would have if you and I'm sure uh, Vice Chancellor Russell has been very helpful in this regard. But given the demands that exist on our colleges, it has to be almost a cookie cutter approach. Here's what we're trying to do. We'd love to involve you in the process. Here are five concrete steps you can take. And I know you've outlined it a lot in that. But here's what you can do as a college to try to do it. And I think if uh, it is, you know, simple enough and, and uh, direct enough and manageable enough, there may just be the leadership that will be at the respective institutions to carry it off. But I think it's a very worthwhile project. I think you've come to the right place and I'd like to see it move ahead. Thank you for your advice. Thank you. Member Azumi. I also want to... Uh, give my thanks as well for your uh, presentation. It was very interesting and, uh, you know, I wish uh, the project, you know, all the success in the world, it's greatly needed. Uh, just curious, uh, um, you know, in addition to the Constitution, the, uh, the uh, books that you had to decide upon from a huge litany of titles, uh, how did you whittle it down to those particular four or five? Great question. It was difficult. Um, we had a public nomination process where uh, we received over 300 nominations. Uh, uh, so there was a hunger out there, uh, and people have ideas. Um, we took that list and we worked with uh, librarians, including uh, a librarian from uh, head librarian, Merced uh, College, uh, to further whittle that list down. And then we asked a group of scholars, writers, uh, presenters of public programs to make recommendations and then we made the final selection of five. And just so you know, this isn't, uh, this is 
the first big initiative of ours, but we intend every year or every new t every two years to do this uh, along different themes. It could be justice, it could be education, but um, my my vision is that um, there are uh, institutions such as community colleges, such as the California Council for the Humanities, California State Libraries, that are learning institutions that are fundamental to our civil society. And in California, we have a difficulty of, of, of working together. And I'd like to use this program as a way that we could work together and demonstrate to Californians the strength of each of our institutions and how we can better work together to serve California. Member Ramos. Ralph, I also want to thank you for coming and echo my colleagues uh, kudos on your good work. Um, I'm thinking as uh, I'm talking out loud about how important this work is in a kind of historical context. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us who had the benefit of civics education in schools um, will remember a lot of our history around what was happening in American culture and in the state about 100 years ago at mm -hmm. the turn of the last century when you had civic institutions that were created precisely to integrate a uh, burgeoning population of immigrants, newcomers to American democracy from cultures that had no familiarity with that kind of um, way of doing business and seeing public problem solving. And um, we tend to forget, because we don't have civics education in our schools anymore the way that we should, that we were able to overcome as a society tremendous challenges that uh, probably at the time were unprecedented. We had the Depression. We had World War II, uh, we had uh, the Cold War. And I would submit that one of the reasons that as a culture and as a state we were able to weather those storms is because we built a common identity through our understanding of shared bonds around democracy, opportunity, the basic things that it seems that are intrinsic to the kind of um, educational program you're trying to lift up. Mm. And in these times when we face also very daunting problems, terrorism, environmental decay, uh, real diminishment in public discourse and civility. And we have uh, also very, very diverse populations trying to coexist in a very difficult economic environment. It may seem Pollyanna, but I believe firmly, as you seem to, that reintegrating public discussion, focusing on what we share in common as opposed to what divides us, creating fora where people can come together to joint problem solve is probably one of the most important engagements that we can undertake as members of the California society, members of American society. So I do think that, uh, you know, to close out my thought, the, the, the community colleges to me um, seem like the new settlement houses of today. Mm -hmm. They seem like the place that is the one catchment area, maybe along with public schools K through 12, where you have an opportunity that we're not seizing sufficiently to really help people understand the commonalities that we share, mm -hmm. the history that we share, mm -hmm. the opportunities that we can shape together. So to whatever extent that our colleges and our districts can be involved in advancing this work, I think it really does make uh, sense as more than just an academic exercise. I think that we need to reinvigorate our democracy. The Occupy Wall Street movement demonstrates, as much as the Tea Party does, that people are hungry for a place to put their concerns. They're hungry for a place to make America a, a great uh, society again, feeling that somehow we've lost something. And uh, if this effort can be an important investment in that direction, I, will, for one, am all for partnering with you in whatever ways that we can to make that happen. Thank you. Member Davis Lyman. Thank you so much for presenting this um, short uh, piece to us today. Um, I'd like to ask you, when are you actually going to be putting dates on this um, so that planning can go on? Because faculty need to know ahead of time as they're getting ready for the fall, summer would not be a good time to start putting some dates on this and expanding the list. And secondly, I noticed that most of the people on the webinars come from the UC system and one from Stanford. Don't overlook the faculty in the community college system. We have scholars who have written in this in many of these areas and even expanded. So I'd love it the next time this list comes out that some of our scholars are here and recognized who have published also. Thank you. So when do you expect to put the date? When do you so, think? So uh, we uh, just found out last week uh, all the communities that uh, through 
public library systems that are signed up. So I expect in a month's time to have all the dates set out. And um, I'll okay. work with Barry mm -hmm. to target community colleges in those areas. Um, I would say in December and January. So okay, that we have you. plenty of time to plan out how mm -hmm. community colleges will be involved. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Ralph. Thank you Look very much for your time and all you do.